The Turkish get-up is one of the best overall exercises that you can do to kind of catch everything. It's a, it's a good stability point, uh, it's a stability checkpoint exercise, it's a good mobility exercise, it's an overall total body strength exercise. So we can use it for a lot of different things. What we're going to do today is go through a step-by-step -step progression of the Turkish get-up, kind of like going through each of those checkpoints because one of the biggest things that people screw up on is that they go too quickly and they don't actually establish that checkpoint, that stability through each position as they go up into their Turkish getup. There's a couple things I wanna to discuss too on how to make sure that you get the most out of your Turkish getup and these little tips that you can go through to make sure that you don't get yourself hurt. So first and foremost, when you are starting out your Turkish getup, make sure that you start with just body weight. If you're worried about uh, making sure that you're getting the right form down, you can use like a plate, like a paper plate uh, or furniture mover and stick it on your hand. Uh, if you want to be mean to yourself, you can put a glass of water on there, plastic cup, right, and do that. So if you're going to get kind of like rocky with the motion, shaky with the motion, and you're going to dump some water on you, you know that you're going you're gonna to spill it. But eventually you'll work up to weight. So what we're going to do is you're going to lie down on your back, and then I'm going to go to my right side. So I'm going to go towards you. I'm going to fan that foot out, that leg out to 45 degrees. Arm will be out to 45 degrees. This is where I'm gonna have my fist. This is where eventually I'll have my weight or where I'm gonna balance my plate or my, my cup of water. Now, first and foremost, it's not a sit-up. This is where people screw up. It's not a sit-up. It's a roll and a reach to your side. So I'm gonna push off my left foot. I'm gonna push my left hip over. And then as I'm doing that, simultaneously, I'm pushing my elbow into the floor and I'm pulling myself towards the camera. So push, boom. That's my big step right there. My tension's created through this leg. That's step one. Step two, I'm gonna drive into the floor and corkscrew my hand in. Boom, that's step two. Eyes are focused on my thumb or on my hand because eventually I'll have a weight there. I wanna keep this shoulder open. I don't want that co going forward and caved in. So open. Step three, pushing through my left foot. I come up into this half get up position, this bridge position. Step four, I'm gonna pull this leg underneath and as I'm pulling underneath, I want to keep tension into my leg and into my hand. I don't want to lose that. So I shouldn't hear my foot scrape across the floor. That entire time my arm is corkscrewed into the floor. Here's step four. Or that was step four. Here's step five. I'm going to hinge into my hip and then I'm going to stand up nice and tall. So I shifted my weight into my, into my mass. Most of my, most of my mass went into my body. Got my hand off the floor. Here's where step six comes into play. And you can either go into... Uh, what we call a windshield wiper with the front leg, which is what I like to do because I have uh, knees from bad basketball practice when I was younger, okay? Or some people like to sweep the back leg and go towards that. Depending on the surface of the floor that you're on, you might want to wear pants. This kind of grinds into my knee like a rug burn right now. So I like to keep that foot stable and swing my other foot across, okay? This entire time, this arm is straight, the biceps by my ear. I'm then in this kind of like half lunge position, this split squat position. I'm gonna push up and boom, now I've reached the top of my get up. Let's reverse it. So we're gonna go through all those steps again, but I'm gonna count them backwards. So that was the last step here. Now I'm gonna start it again. So here's one, here's two, three. This is a big one. This is where people goof up. This is when you wanna look up at the weight, okay? Now I have eyes on it. I'm gonna hinge into that hip and my hand's gonna kind of follow my body down and plant about a dollar bill away from my knee. Notice that I'm towards the camera. That's right off the front of my knee. I'm not reaching backwards. This is putting torque on your back. It's rotating. So this is step three. I'm going to shift my weight into my hand, keeping weight on my foot. Boom. Step four. You should be able to maintain this. Eyes are not leaving the weight. Here's step five. Step six, that hand will slide out. I'm keeping my shoulder pulled back. Almost like I'm scooping my shoulder blade into my armpit. And I'm coming back down and returning. As you come back down, that weight can shift over the midline of your body. And you can use that as counterweight as you come back down. So I'm gonna show it one more time in full motion and I'm just gonna count each step. One, two, three, Four, five, six, seven. Okay? One, two, three, four.
four, five, six, seven. That's the Turkish get up. Work on that, do multiple reps. Uh, start with light weight. Don't add too much weight too soon. Build some endurance through it, build some pattern through it, and make sure you pause at each of those seven points as you go through the Turkish get up. Feel your core working, feel your abs working, making sure that all that good stuff is happening as you go through it, because it's a catch-all exercise, guys. Like we can see, as a coach, we can see what's going on in the body when you do this one, and we can see what we need to work on more for you. So take each checkpoint seriously, all seven of them. Make sure you can maintain that if I were told you to pause as you did it.